As I continued my travels through the Midwestern U.S., I spotted a promising campground near Merrill, Wisconsin. Cozy little spot. Should be fine. It seemed fitting that my Trillium Outback camper was surrounded by Trilliums. Well, it's a really good spot right beside the Wisconsin River. But that water's running a little too swift for me to kayak. I think I'm going to go somewhere where it's just a little bit calmer. But as the shadows grew longer, another inconvenience took flight. Well, unfortunately, the bugs here are absolutely insane. I tried deep woods off, it didn't work. I tried repel, it didn't work. Nothing seems to work with these ones. And so, ah, I am not staying here. They're going for my ears, driving me insane. I gotta get out of here, find a new camping site. <laughs> Well, I'm now in northern Wisconsin on a standard highway. Uh, unfortunately, to get up here, I had to take a lot of interstates and freeways, a lot of trucks, uh, but now it's a little bit more relaxing. For about the last week and a half, two weeks, the daily temperature had been getting close to 90, and it was extremely humid. Even inside the trailer with, the, with all the fans on and the vents. I wanted to show you this. The damp rid. After about three days, this is how humid it's been. Look at all the water in there. It was hard to take. A lot of people sort of wonder, well, how do I get around or how do I get by without having air conditioning? Well, this is how I do it. I just travel to somewhere cooler. So my quest for a cooler, bug-free place to camp took me to the northern tip of Wisconsin until I ran out of land. But that wouldn't stop me. Well, I'm at the ferry terminal to Madeline Island. The ferry just arrived, almost ready to go on. It looks really steep. Now I'm taking a little bit of a chance here because I'm going to an island to camp but I have no reservation so uh, I spent a hundred dollars for this ferry it would really suck if I get there and there's nowhere to camp but hey you got to take risks sometime this is mine After about a 20 minute boat ride, I disembarked the ferry and was on the shores of Madeline Island. About 10 minutes later, I was at the entrance of Big Bay State Park. Well, surprise, surprise. 
4.30, there's nobody there. Who knew? So, I'm just gonna find a campsite that's open, looks open, doesn't have a ticket on it. And go that way. Fortunately for me, a very kind park person actually helped me get registered. And there is also a booking phone by the entrance for latecomers. Well, it's not on the shoreline, but I guess I have to compromise. And for reference, none of the campsites are on the shoreline. I'm being serenaded by a squirrel. Well, set up camp. It's almost time for my first little walk. I was really hoping I could get a place right by the water, but guess I gotta walk to it. I need the exercise anyway. About a mile away from the campsite is the Point Scenic area. Here the shores are rocky, mostly sedimentary rocks that have weathered time for over 600 million years. The May forest fires in Alberta had cast a haze over the island, adding to a more mysterious presence to the shore. The waters, however, are still very clear with a slight hint of green and blue. Although the spring flowers were doing well, many of the trees were having challenges, like fungal growth and beetle infestation. Throw in bitter winters, and the lightning strike this one had to endure, and it can be a harsh environment for a tree. If you're wondering why I'm wearing a jacket, it's actually quite cold here, which is a pleasant surprise after the heat wave, but it's a little cooler than I thought. As a matter of fact, tonight it's going to get close to freezing, so I'll probably be putting the heater on. And uh, you probably will see a lot of the trees in the background are still in their buds. You know, a lot of the deciduous trees haven't actually formed leaves. And of course, different from where I've been the last little while, is there's a lot of pine trees. And pines dominate the boardwalk trail, an easy stroll close to the campgrounds. It's a narrow spit of land with the sandy shores of Lake Superior on one side and a lagoon on the other. This is a big old white pine, like the ones we have in New Brunswick. The white pines actually have dark coarse bark, while the red pines have a smoother reddish bark.
The pine cones are different as well, with the white pines having long narrow cones, while the red pine cones are short and round. But which pine cone does this red squirrel prefer? It looks like the red ones are the tastiest. This deer was having issues and seemed a little embarrassed when I caught her in a private moment. Well, at this point, the trail kind of splits. Off that way is the lake shore, and this way is the lagoon. Let's have a look at the lagoon. Well, the lagoon, or bog as it really is right here, definitely shows promise. Um, I'd love to kayak in here. However, I don't see a launch area, which is unfortunate because I, I just love to like kayak through a bog, especially one here. Well, I'm not gonna give up. There must be a way. Well, it was a great walk but I still want access to that lagoon. And I've got this map of the state park. Let me just show it to you here. And uh, that's the lagoon right here. And uh, the campground where I'm at right now is there. And there is just no ramp for a kayak anywhere on the state park. However, if you look closely right there, it says Town Park, which is at the opposite end. So what I'm thinking is I need to pay a visit to that Town Park and see if they have a kayak ramp. Nothing to lose, I'm already here, right? Big Bay Town Park is a municipal park not connected to the state one. It also has a campground, but since I'd already paid mine in advance, I was only interested in one thing. Well, there is access to the lagoon, but still got a walk. My first lagoon. So this is more like a boreal forest. Something you'd expect in Canada. The other side is superior. It is boreal, so. It's no surprise on the southern part, it is as well. Well, I see lots of fiddleheads. Ferns are just coming up. Although the water is really calm, I still have to be careful because uh, there's lots of logs and stumps underneath 
the water is black so you really don't see anything you just gotta hope there's something pointing out of the water so you can go around it there's a really strange mist floating across the lagoon. It looks like it's coming from Superior, uh, mixing with the warmer water probably of the lagoon and making this really weird fog. So they got to be very careful. There are ducks and geese nesting in the area. Oh, look at that. There's a couple of, uh, of turtles on a log. But I just passed a uh, Canada goose that was nesting. I was really quiet. Got out of the area. Let her be. Okay, I gotta try to get a picture of these two turtles. That is so awesome. gone. Swimming with the turtles. They don't seem to care. The side's a lot calmer. There's actually a path, like a canoe path, to uh, go across the spit from the lagoon to Lake Superior. And I'm coming up to it right now. This portage trail actually crossed the boardwalk where I had just walked before. Now I'm sure in the summer when it's dead calm on the lake and the water is warmer it would be a great idea to traverse with the kayak from the lagoon to the lake, but not today. I don't have the clothing, that's super cold. I don't have the experience, and uh, it would just be a dumb thing to do. Look, but not paddle. Bare feet on those sandy shores would be heaven in August. But in May, the beach is empty. Well, I think that's it for me. Almost lost my camera. And it's getting a little cooler. But it was a great paddle. Uh oh, I'm getting close to that heron again. He's gonna be mad at me.
The boardwalk is awesome. Just a little stroll down it is worth it. But if you do get a chance to get a kayak, come on out to the lagoon. You'll love it. So my special meal tonight is Nasoya Organic Vegan Thai Basil Vegetable Dumplings in a little package. Got it at Walmart. Fried them up just two or three minutes aside and I added some green beans. No mess. Does it taste good? Oh, and uh, of course, my only seasoning, soya sauce. Mmm. Easy meal. I like it. Oh, this is really, really good. And I needed it after that long paddle today. But I want to make sure everybody understands. Because people, I don't know why, but when I eat something vegan, they assume I'm vegan. Well, if I eat Chinese, does that mean I'm Chinese? I mean, come on, people. Anybody, literally anybody can enjoy a vegan meal. I'm a vegetarian. There's a big difference. Right, squirrel? You're right, and make sure you eat lots of nuts. They're an excellent source of protein. Well, it's a great day, but it's time to chill. And I don't think I'll have a problem chilling tonight because it's going to be a little cold. Uh, I'll have the heater going because it's going to get close to freezing. But it's right now, it's really nice and it's quiet. And it was a good time to give a little assessment of this campground because that's what I've been trying to do the last little while is wherever I camp, I kind of give you an idea whether it's a good campground or if it's a good value or if it's worth recommending. And I'm at Big Bay State Park and I'm on Madeline Island on Lake Superior in Wisconsin. Now, first thing about being on the island. Um, it's an interesting island. It's, I don't really think I got a chance to appreciate it. I did drive around a few roads and I didn't really see a lot. There's a lot of private land here. I think the big focus as far as I can see is the marina and Big Bay State Park. Now, as far as the park and the campground goes, there's lots to see here. There's some really, really easy trails. Uh, you can go right along the beach. The water's crystal clear and beautiful. Um, there's uh, some really nice uh, sea formations, the rocks around the shore. And there's the lagoon. Um, it really is a nice park. But is it good value? Well, I think part of the reason I'm not overly happy is the way I did things. First of all, I drove to, uh, what was it called, Bayfield, I think it was called, and was getting information on the ferry. And I ended up on a whim, I just took the ferry. Didn't question, didn't have reservations. Off I went. The ferry to get here and return was $98. That is extremely expensive. I mean, I've done the Strata Bell Isle from Newfoundland to Quebec for like $27, and that was an hour and a half. This was just a very short trip, so the ferry was expensive. But as far as the campground goes, well, this spot I have right here cost me $25. It's unserviced, there's no electrical. There are places that do have electrical here, but they're more money. So what did I get? I got your usual uh, picnic table, the fire pit, a place to put my camper or a tent, and a place to put my, my Jeep. What I did not like is that there is a vehicle fee on top of that. It was $11 a day, and that is insane. That's outrageous. $11 just to park your vehicle. If it was a big area, you know, like uh, Banff, for example, I know you gotta pay money to travel around Banff, but this is a small state park. And it's on a little island. There's really not very far you can go, so um, I can't justify it. I paid a lot, 
and I, it's, I paid too much. And I think in the summertime, it would probably be a much better deal. Uh, it would be warmer, you could, uh, you could swim on the beach. But right now the water is really, really cold and uh, nobody's gonna be swimming in that. There should be a off-season discount and get rid of that vehicle fee. That's my thoughts. <laughs> I've never heard so many frogs. It's deafening. We need earplugs here. Well, after I finish my coffee, I'll be heading out. But before I go, I just want to make one thing perfectly clear. I only went to two places in Wisconsin to camp and they were at random. I really didn't do my research and uh, I don't think they're representative of Wisconsin at all. I'm sure there are phenomenal places to camp here. So what I'd like to suggest is if you have a favorite campsite in Wisconsin, Please send it to me. I'll make a list so people know Wisconsin has some phenomenal places. And I'll come back next time and I'll prove it. I hope you enjoyed this video. Check out my others as well. If you'd like to find out what happened to the camera, please subscribe. <laughs>